The only thing I don't condone is this fantasy football stuff. Mm. I don't care. <laughs> We get to keep talking. The amount, the amount of people that ask me, yo, should I pick up Miles? I'm like, bro, I don't yeah, do that fantasy stuff, like, bro. I don't care. What's up, y'all? Thank you for tuning in for another episode of the Second Win Podcast. You back with the best looking brothers with the freshest phase I'm on the podcast game. I'm, I'm Jay Mills. You already know this, my right hand, Gio. Dang, dang. Thank you for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, comment. Please, we appreciate all the love. But today, our guest is a Pittsburgh native, Penn State alum. Yes, sir. And current Philadelphia Eagles running back, a.k.a. Bowie, Miles Sanders, man. I appreciate you coming on the show, brother. Yes, sir. Yes, toast, sir. Toast appreciate sure. y'all having me, yeah, man. Yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Yes, sir. Thank you, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Pussy yeah, the yeah. G-Wagon. Yeah. <laughs> Car outside, fresh wash. Yeah, like, man. swag a little different. Energy a little different. Like, you undefeated. Philly yeah, buzzing. Buzzing. It's all right. <laughs> Neighbors outside running around. <laughs> running around. The sunlight shining. Yeah. Like, okay. You man, know. Yeah, man. Just talk about how you feeling, you know, mentally and physically at this point of the season, man. You know, things are going great. So how you feeling? Uh, feeling feeling good, honestly. Um, I'm not just trying to say that just cause, but like, um, you know, I, I switched up a lot. Um, just like within myself, you know, over this past off season, just trying to figure out everything, you know, my body and all type of stuff, you know, and just you know, I spend a lot of time by myself too. Just I work out by myself too. I, I enjoy doing that because I think that's just a mental game also mm -hmm. too. So, but um, yeah, just. Just locked in, man. Just a different type of uh, focus that I got right now. Um, and just trying to uh, control everything that I can control, really. Even that answer right there, it kind of gave me the idea, like, he's locked in. Like, yeah, yeah. just how serious you were about that answer, just mm -hmm. off rip. Off rip. It's like your, your focus was on another level this offseason. That's how yeah, it seemed. Yeah. yeah, it had to be, bro. Like, um, just this game, you can't, you can't cheat this game. That's one thing. It's one that I uh, found out, and uh, not that I ever did. It's just you know I I, I learned from other people's mistakes too, you know. Um, yeah. So, and yeah, just n just not taking anything for granted. For sure. Right. Take us back to like young Booby. You know, mm -hmm. you a Pittsburgh native. <laughs> one two. Shout out for one two. Yeah, yeah got to. <laughs> you a Pittsburgh native, and like it's not easy out there. You know, it's very easy to go the wrong way. There's a lot of stuff going on. How did you stay level-headed? How did you focus on, you know, just football? How did you gravitate to just football when it's so it's so easy to go the wrong way? Um, I got to give big credit to my mom, uh, for sure. Uh, you know, growing up in Pittsburgh, with, like you say, it, it ain't easy. Uh, it's not like a big city like like Philly um, or Chicago or something like that, but uh, it's, it's very small, but a lot goes on in that city. Um, and, like, like it's it's real easy to to get caught up in a lot of a lot of BS, and um, I didn't seen all type of people do it. Like all my friends that I play football with is either dead or in jail. Most of them, I'm not gonna lie. Especially the ones I played with. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that should be in my position just cause you know uh, cause P Pittsburgh got a lot of talent. Yeah, a lot of talent coming out that city. But um, yeah, I gotta give big credit to my mom. Uh, she sacrificed a lot. You know, uh, raising me since since uh, since knee high. So, and uh, we moved out the hood um, early. No, for, for real. And but my grandma and stuff still lived in there. So, but my mom worked too. So, that's who who was watching me most of the times. My aunt, my my grandma, and stuff like that. Right. Uh, and but when I got older and got to like middle school, you know, going into high school, started taking football serious. I played started playing football like when I was seven. Um. Uh, my first position was a guard. I was a guard. Oh hell no! Yeah, a I swear, guard. Bro. I swear, bro. <laughs> you was a... you was striking shit. I Man. can't remember really. I don't remember. <laughs> I, mean, I just kind of chunky then. No, I wasn't even chunky, bro. I, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. Uh, it was just I don't know. My mom just just threw me in there. I ain't gonna lie. I had number ninety eight and everything. I was late. Had the, had the yeah, I was late. Bar. I was one of the. <laughs> yeah, I came. Yeah, bro. The one bar. The, what's it called? The umbot. The umbot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I, it was one of those that I, I like got in there like middle of the season type, mm -hmm. and then the coach, the head coach of the team at the time is actually my mentor right now. Yeah. So which is pretty cool. Um, 
then like towards the end of the season, he put he started putting me on running back. And um then from now on, then I just been a running back ever since. Yeah, it. since uh, next season start went from number ninety eight to one. Hell yeah. Right. I went from, had number one when I was young. Man, uh, it is is it gives you such an appreciation for your parents once you get older because you see like other people go the wrong way and you know they didn't have the right guidance. Oh yeah, for sure. You know, so I mean, at the age you're like, oh, that's just mom. She's just talking. Mm -hmm. But once you get to like, you know, the age where you can actually comprehend, it's like, damn, my parents really instilled the right morals in me. Like, this is what molded me to be who I am today. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's always the dopest. And I appreciate that so much. Oh, yeah, you know, sure, at this man. age, you just see it's so many different situations where it's like, damn, if he had some guidance, damn, if he had some leadership, he would probably go this way. You see people with talent, all types that's all of stuff. It take. That's all it takes, man. Some guidance and, and a positive, uh, just a positive uh, view to look at, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it's good to see that a good influence in front of you. Yeah. So, so for you, uh, personally, like you growing up in that environment, you know, you see your friends, your boys making those decisions, but you chose football, right? So when did you realize that football was like your ticket to be somebody and be a big time college football NFL player, you know, and take those dreams to the next level? And like, did those add, did that add pressure on you knowing that like, yo, like I could, this could be my ticket? Um, It wasn't really a lot of pressure until I say college. Um, I can say I didn't start taking football serious until freshman year in high school. Um, I think when I started playing football, even when I started playing running back and, you know, scoring touchdowns, and that's everybody starting to know me because of football for Little League and the freshman squad that I was on uh, for the high school that I played for. And uh, it, I think one year, because I played the freshman team when I was in eighth grade, so um, I was only one of the only eighth graders that was on that team right now. at that time. And I was balling. And then the head coach next year, he told me to go up there varsity. They they lift, and then the freshman team goes out and work out first. So I'm in a lifting with the varsity. And I'm just like, I remember I, only, I ain't touch a weight, bro. I swear. <laughs> I didn't. Was, just I, just praying, bro. I, didn't, I ain't going to lie, bro. I didn't want to be there. I right. didn't. Yeah. I swear. You the way my mind, yeah, my way, yeah, my, 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 my uh, mindset at the time, I did not want to be there, bro. I was like 15, like 160 pounds, bro. These, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Yeah. These dudes trying to go to college and play, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I, I wasn't, I wasn't trying to be there. I didn't touch a weight until... Uh, then summer go by, then it's time for camp. Yeah, then I'm still on this varsity team. Like right. I can't believe it, bro. I'm the, on, like, and then my high school I went to Willing Hills. Mm -hmm. uh, they weren't known for letting freshmen play on the varsity, so yeah. this was a big deal. And I just didn't even know, bro. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm out there bullshit. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> You're naive to yeah, it. Yeah, like I'm balling, but at the time, like I'm, I don't want to get hit. Mm -hmm. That was my big thing. Right, I did yeah. not want to get hit, bro. I'm like, this dude's too big. And then I think uh, middle of camp, we had camp at the stadium too. Um, I think the star running back of the team ended up transferring mm. for some odd reason. I don't know. And then the backup running back that we had uh, was suspended at the time. Damn, so, so he was, he was yeah, so yeah, he was right there. They just gave him to come and tell me like, yeah, you, you star running back like right. this week. All right. Of shocked. course, we play, we play, um, who we playing? Uh, Upper St. Clair, they was the they were in the uh, championship last year. They lost, but they was in the championship last year. So I'm like, okay, I'm like, bro, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm I'm not even really knowing how big, like, yeah, like I'm I'm not really taking none of this shit serious, bro. I swear. And then I ain't gonna lie, my stats is gonna be wicked when I tell y'all. <laughs> <laughs> it was 17 carries for three yards. I'm telling y'all, bro. That's the same. You was in the first you, game. You was I about to say something no, crazy. I was running hard, but three? we got an ass whoop. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we got an ass whoop. So, and then I'm just back there. Yeah, I remember I had one good run. It was 10 yards. I remember <laughs> that. But then I look at the stats. I'm like, how I get three? Three. Right. I'm going backwards. You know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> Did that like hurt your confidence going a little bit being young? Yeah, a little bit because everybody looked at me like I was crazy, like you mm -hmm. out there bullshit. So, but next game I looked a little better. Um, then third game, uh, looked even more better, mm -hmm. and then uh, that's when the running back came back, you know, from from being suspended. So he's playing, uh, and then 
he ends up getting hurt like in a couple games. So he's mm-hmm. towards ACL. So I'm back up. Yeah, now you the guy. Yeah, yeah now I'm the guy for the rest of the season. I, and I, I don't know what happened. Like, bro, I just, I don't know. I just start going crazy. <laughs> like, I ain't going to lie, bro. I just start going crazy. I hit him a 33, bro. I'm like 160 pounds, like 5'9". Going bro. stupid. Freshman year in high school. And then just going crazy, bro. So you started like freshman, sophomore, junior, senior year. Mm-hmm. Damn, that's a that's that's dope. Yeah, yeah not bro. a lot of guys are doing that. Yeah, and then and then even after that freshman season, we made it to the championship. We played a champ- district championship at Hines. Hines, yep. Yeah, we lost though. We lost to the team that's been there for the last two years. So um, that was a three peak. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. but. Bro, it clicked in my head when I got that first offer. Yeah. Right after my freshman year, um, the old head coach uh, for one of the high school teams that we played my freshman year in, in the playoffs, uh, Terry Smith was. Yep. Yeah, yep. T. Yep. Smith. Yep. Um, he he was like the receivers coach at uh, Temple. Yeah. Yeah, I went to a junior there. I'm the only freshman there on a junior there, and they offered me there. Then. I think the next week I get like Toledo and those are like my only two offers right now. And I'm just and I'm just realizing, you know, I can go to school for free. So, so it's an amazing know, that's I'm a th- blessing, yeah. bro. And all I'm thinking about is my mom at the point at that time. Like I'm like, yeah, it's keeping some money in her pocket. You yep. know what I'm saying? I watch my mom struggle all the time. So and after that, it just took off, bro. So yeah. so from those stories, obviously your high school career transcended, right? Mm-hmm. So we look back. Mr. PA, number one running back in your class, right? But then once you got to Penn State, right? So you had those two years where you didn't play, right? So that was probably one of the hardest adversity in fo- adversity in football that you had in a while. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You guys, you were a star up here, five-star number one running back, and then you came in and you didn't play for two years, right? You had to wait till your third year to get the opportunity. So those lessons that you learned in those two years, how does that impact you now for you being RB1, you know, on a... 3 no squad doing what you guys are doing. Like, how do those lessons impact you now? Like, what did you learn from back yeah. then? Uh, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Just talking about that. Um, that that's probably the best. I'm. That's probably the best thing that happened to me. Um, I, I was never like a big headed dude. Um, I was always humble. That's why my mom raised me. Um, but you know, just going through that, just saying like anybody's expendable type type stuff. You know, like anything can happen. Um without your control which you just gotta just gotta keep crying you can't give up like you know i ain't i won't i won't be lying if i went that transfer it was going wasn't going through yeah. my head you know all that type of stuff mm-hmm. like but i was looking at a long run like how people view me you know um back at home or myself later on like like why why would i just up and leave like that you know because my mentality was the either going start or split time with say i knew about say you know he bought out this freshman year i i still stay committed you know what i'm saying so, on some leonard and guy right shit. If, yeah. if if i was a, if i was scared of competition i would have decommitted it you yeah. know you know what i'm saying but it was just one of those things bro like you know i learned a lot from say too don't get me wrong so it was all a big learning experience for me you know and made me grow up fast like real fast that made me grow up real fast i ain't gonna lie uh, just focused on a lot of other, other stuff, you know, um, you know, just being more observant around the people I'm with, you know, who who's really with me and all this stuff. I was people calling my phone talking about, yeah, I seen you play. I'm like, bro, y'all crazy. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, y'all, don't lie to me. Like, y'all crazy. <laughs> right. Y'all crazy for telling me y'all seen me because y'all, y'all just see two six on it. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's crazy. That's, but, that's like so mature because a lot of dudes. Hard. Five stars, they don't just hand out five stars. You no, know no, what I'm saying? No. Like, it probably wasn't that many five stars in the country. So you could probably get a win anywhere else and been the guy from the second you stepped on campus. So it takes a different type of dude, a very mature type of dude, to be like, all right, I'm going to sit here for these two years. But mm-hmm. when it's my turn, y'all going to feel me. You Tell know? Me that's all I had. And that's all you was thinking about. But also, too, if you think about it, too, if I'm him, I'm a five star, I want to show when I get to school that, like, I'm that guy. Like, you didn't get to really show that for two years. So it's like, what can Miles really do? We know yeah. what you could do in practice, but, like, out there in the game, like, you yeah, had to wait y'all, till- you, Especially you know how I was, bro. Yeah, I, 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 was, I was, I was, I was irking me, bro. Yeah, I'm yeah, telling yeah. you, it was just like a, like, I can't wait, you know? For I was, sure. I was happy to say, though, you know? Right. That's the one thing about it. That I didn't never, 
never was that type. I was always, you know, happy to see him ball. I was sure. excited watching him play. I'm telling you, that's yeah. that's like watching like that's like people being Reggie Bush's teammate. I'm telling you, mm -hmm. I'm putting Saquon up there in college football. Like that's like being Reggie Bush's teammate. Like yeah. I got to see that. That's you know saying like ain't you know dog. <laughs> like right, practice. Right. You know what I'm saying he he didn't take his foot off the gas at mm -hmm. all. And he felt you coming. That's that made, that made, that made, it made y'all both better. better yeah, yeah. He was like, I'm coming for that spot. I'm telling you. And say in the back of his head, he's like, he's coming. I got to He's work. coming. If I lack, he's take because he's that too. You know what I'm saying? But it's like now you fast forward to NFL, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at the Eagles and y'all number one in offense, top 10 in defense. Y'all got ridiculous receivers. Y'all got a great running back core. Y'all got a front seven that's fast, physical. Y'all got DBs that can strap quarterback playing at an MVP level. High right? level. Yeah. And, you know, three, four weeks through the season, he looked like the MVP. Do you think, like, y'all team now on paper, or not even on paper, in reality, do you think y'all got what it takes? And if it, if anything can hold you back, what do you think it could be? Um, I definitely, you know, I definitely think we got what it takes. You know, it's it's going to take a lot more than what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, 3-0 is exciting. Like I said, I've never even been 2-0 since I've been to the Eagles or 3-0. So all this stuff is exciting right now, but we, we talk about it all the time. Bro. We can't listen to the outside, yeah. you know. Um, we just got to keep going. Like, uh, just with, with Jalen playing the way he's playing, like, he understands – it, it takes more than just being the best player in the month, you know. It, there's probably three, three other months that he gotta, he gotta play at that level, bro. Mm -hmm. And it's a real hard, it's really hard to win in this this league. So it's we just taking it one game at a time. You got to, yeah, oh, man. But if, if anything that's gonna beat us, it's gonna be us, you know. Um, like we haven't played no no good second half football, so if we want to get real deep down to it, so right. that's all we talk about is stuff like that. Like we look right. cool, we look good. I ain't gonna lie, but we got it's gonna take more though. It's a long season, seventeen yeah. weeks, yeah. and it's important that y'all realize, like, okay, we've been good for the first month, mm -hmm. but it could go downhill. So we gotta <laughs> make sure we don't we stay level headed. Yeah, got to right. Yeah, that's that's important. And, like, you from PA, right? Mm -hmm. So you know what Philadelphia fans are like from the time you was coming up. Yeah. And it's like, when you playing well, it's nothing better than playing for a Philadelphia team. They going to praise you. They going to love you like yep. no other. But when you playing bad, they don't hold their tongue. <laughs> they on your ass. They on your, they ass. your ass. So what have you learned from being in Philly, like playing in Philly these past four years? Play your best yeah. all the time. <laughs> um yeah, it's, it, it gets – it's it's not nerve-wracking. I ain't going to lie. It's, it's really exciting. I ain't going to lie. Um, like, PA alone with their fans. You know, you got Pittsburgh. Fa Steeler fans are crazy. Not super crazy, crazy, but mm -hmm. they travel. You know, they, yeah. they got real loyal fans, you know. Then Penn State fans, mm. you know, Yo, crazy. Like cult. Yeah, like, PA's fan base is, is crazy all, all throughout the state. And then you got Philly fans, I think. I think my topic with all three, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> but it just shows that they love their football, man. Um, they care about y'all. Yeah, like, for sure. And we trying so hard. You know, they, they got one. You see what it was like when they got that first one. So, yeah, it was like a circus. Yeah, so um, they just love their football. But it allows, it makes everybody play at a high, high level because yeah. you know you gonna check that Instagram. Mm -hmm. You gonna check that Twitter. I don't care what anybody <laughs> say. <laughs> the you, you gonna see what they saying on. You know what I'm saying? So, right. and it does. I want to be lying. It does something to everybody. You know, mm -hmm. all the athletes. It's, you gonna see it, and you gonna it's, it's gonna hurt your feelings a little bit. Yeah. Right. But it's just like, bro, you ain't trying to have that feeling. So right. just play your best ball. You gotta come with it every Sunday, every, every game. Even on plays that you don't get the ball, if you miss a miss an assignment, somebody gonna mention you on Twitter. Yeah. You they look at everything to pick every. If you yeah. if you if there's an interception and you not hustling to go tackle the DB, <laughs> Miles is loafing. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah. You gonna get a loaf from the fans, not even from the coach, from the fans. That's insane. That's insane. You might feel that a little bit more. That's Tell me. that's why. The only thing I don't condone is this fantasy football stuff. Mm. I don't care. 
<laughs> we get to keep talking. The amount, the amount of people that ask me, yo, should I pick up Miles? I'm like, bro, I don't yeah, do that fantasy stuff, like, bro. I don't care. Bro. <laughs> you tell her, right? Yeah, they, they, I be getting the messages too, and I don't even play. Like, who should I pick up? Hey, you, you cool with this person? You cool right. with that person? They're gonna ball this. I'm like, this bro, game? I don't know what's gonna happen in in the game. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? Even if. Something's designed to go to this dude. If the defense is right, the defense is right. right. He's not getting the ball. <laughs> it don't like, matter. I don't know what you want me to what you want me to say. Even my real my my friends from my home, I'd be like, bro, F y'all take it, bro. F y'all take it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care, bro. I don't care. Uh, so dude. so looking back on, you know, last year, right? And if someone, you know, wanted to nitpick, you know, Miles, right? Miles the player, he missed a couple games, you know, we're hurt. Um, some would say your production wasn't the same, right? And like you said, when you check those mentions, those comments, you see it, right? So taking that negativity, and I know you, I know the type of person you are, you're going to turn into a positive, right? So taking that negativity and heading into this past offseason, grinding, um, you tucked away, like I said, you were locked in, focused on the season and yourself. Like, how'd you take that negative and turn into a positive heading into this offseason and then, you know, turning that into what you guys are doing right now? Uh, be honest, bro. Um, all that doubt, you know, that I get towards whatever I'll be feeling. Um, you know, anybody doubting me, anybody hope like, bro, I use that as as motivation. I swear, bro, because you know, at the end of the day, I never, I never want to be in that situation. I don't know, like, I hate being embarrassed, all type of stuff like that. It's just, um always want to prove somebody wrong that's that just that's what motivate me I ain't gonna lie so um and that's that's what's honestly what's keeping me focused for yeah. real you know everybody counting me out and but i'm used to i'm used to the hard way though i'm, I'm right. not gonna lie so after, like i said talking about how it was at penn state you don't get much harder than that because I, I had a lot of emotions going through then yeah I'm and i was lie. younger right so um i'm just more prepared for for stuff like this so, so your your demeanor is very calm, cool, collected. Like you don't say too much. You do your job. You 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 know your aura is chill. Mm -hmm. You know, laid back, laid back. Your quarterback Jalen is just like that. So talk a little bit about your relationship with him and how you know how he is as the leader of y'all football team right now. Me and him is uh, it's more like. Like like you said, like we don't say too much. Like he don't say too much unless he got to. Mm -hmm. That's what being the quarterback, that's what being the captain is. So only time I really hear him say much is when he breaking the team down. Right. Or the offense is slacking. He he's gonna say something. I ain't mm -hmm. gonna lie. But like as far as like personally with me and him, uh, we we just gotta understand it. Um right. like we had a short, simple conversation before the season started. He told me like, bro, I'm gonna need you. Like on the same page as me. Like, I'm on the same page as you. I already know what you want to share. And I'm on the same stuff. So, yeah. like, I'm, it was just more like a real understanding. Like, just, like, bro, I got you. I told him, I got your back, bro. I'm trying to win. Mm -hmm. Like, sure. Forget all the extra stuff. I'm trying to win. That's all I'm trying to do, bro. A Super Bowl would, would be a blessing. Right. I'm telling you, I, I, I want to witness that, bro. I keep seeing it on TV. I want to witness it. Mm -hmm. um, trying to do anything at this point yeah to do what's it. understood don't got to be said yeah you, you yeah know? so you know what you bring to the table how bad you want it and you know how bad he wants it mm -hmm. and both of y'all been dealing with all types of scrutiny they say yeah, so, you know yeah. this about you last year they saying oh Jalen's gonna be the weak point of the team like y'all look at each other and y'all don't even got to talk about that mm -hmm. but it's like we ready yeah y'all you know? yeah. showed it I mean to this point y'all showing it y'all look bro. Damn near unstoppable. Bro, it's, you know, it's a long it's, season, but it's, shit. It's a little personal, man. It's too sure. personal, bro. I ain't going to lie. It's real personal for me. Um, I don't know. It's just it's giving me chills right now. Bro. So, <laughs> so, Think about it. So I wanted to ask funny that you said that. Like I saw the Instagram. I saw an Instagram video the other day of like Jalen breaking it down. Like you said, Jalen breaking the team down. I'm like, damn. Like, I don't know what the difference is, but, like, talk about, like, that culture change. Like, I feel like the culture around this team right now, like, defense, offense, like, special teams, I just feel like all y'all just balling on all cylinders. Like, y'all playing for each other. I don't know. From the outside looking in, from what I see, like, it's a different Eagles team. Like, can you talk yeah. about that culture, like, what's different from this team compared to, like, all the other teams that you were on? Yeah. Um, uh, I got to be honest. Um, 
big part of that culture change is um, Nick Sirianni, our head coach. Uh, you know, he's literally on the younger side with the coaches. So, and there's a big wave of young coaches coming in the league now. But uh, with him, he just, he's very, like, critical on everything we do. So, and he, he just wants us to maximize everything every day. But as far as, like, the culture and stuff, it's very fun, laid back, you know. Um, do a lot of fun stuff, all, not all day, but, like, just he bring the fun to work, you know, with us winning, too. It's, just, it's real fun to go to work right now. I ain't going to lie. So, and then we just, but it's locked in focus when we in that building, bro. We got to, let's walk through, have to walk through meetings at the meetings till we, till we done. Right. And, but, uh, but it, it's counting off each week though. We keep, the, keep doing what we doing. But, no, I ask that because you know what a championship culture looks like. So, yep, yep, you know yep. what I'm saying? So, yeah. you, you know already yeah, know what I that still, looks I like. I about my big team. Already. You know what a championship culture right, looks like. Yeah, That's yeah. good, though, man. You guys are balling. So, Miles, you know, on this show, it's called Second Wind. So, on this show, you know, we talk about people bouncing back from adversity and advancing into a new self. Um, what are your second wins? Or do you feel like second wins you're catching right now? Or what second wins have you caught before? Um, yeah, just talk about what your second win would be. Um, I have to say... Right now, uh, honestly, with, you know, um, with everything, how the year went, my year last year went, and and just, you know, my, my play just, I didn't like how, you know, everything played out last year, so how everything did. So, and, you know, coming back with this year, the way everything's going, just trying to, you know, just uh, silence all, all the critics and everybody count us out, me out, whatever. Um, you know, and just uh, just be consistent. You know, I think that's a, that's my main thing. Just try to be consistent, just with myself and 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 my play. You know, just uh, just keep this thing going. For sure. Right. Um, what advice do you have to you know the kid watching that wants to be the next Miles Sanders, or even you know the adult watching that might not want to be the next Miles Sanders, but might want to excel in whatever his craft is, you know, because obviously what you have is God given, but a lot of the times the values that it takes to get to the pinnacle of one profession are the same values that other people have to instill in themselves to get to the pinnacle of, you know, another profession. So mm -hmm. what advice do you have to anybody watching? Um, uh, uh, big word, man, sacrifice. Uh, I think that's probably the main important. Um, uh, just, just knowing what, you gotta you gotta understand what what you want isn't always the right thing, and it isn't always what you need to do to get to wherever you at. If you want to get wherever you wherever you want to do with your life, if you want to get uh, be a doctor, lawyer, whatever, um, football player, basketball, player, whatever, man, uh, you you gotta you gotta sacrifice a lot of stuff. Uh, a lot of a lot of a lot of shit comes with that. You know, you can't just do regular stuff and expect to be in those people's uh situations cuz the, they're not they're not these special people right, you, right. you got to think like that like people look at us like you know superheroes you know mm -hmm. um football players basketball players but I'm just uh talking from from an athlete perspective like uh, if you want to be in these shoes you got to you got to sacrifice and do a lot of stuff different you can't do the norm you got to understand that and whether if it's learning from other people's mistakes or whatever, whatever uh, makes you stay focused, you gotta you gotta have that mentality. You gotta you know can't go out all the time, you know. Um, especially if you ain't at a certain like being in high school. Um, when I noticed that I could go to school for, for free, you know, college being paid for, I just made sure just you know all I thought about was my mom, and I wasn't trying to do nothing to uh, to mess that up. So you know. It took only took one time. I've been in the wrong place one time before, so and I'll never happen again. Just notice, uh, so watching my surroundings, you know, watching who I'm with and who I put energy into. You got to watch all that stuff. Energy is uh, important. Yeah, yeah. energy is very important. Like I, I tweet that a lot. Uh, I don't tweet much on Twitter, but I tweet that a lot. <laughs> Protect your energy. You got to, cause people will drain you. Yeah, right bro. Yeah. Um, if you put your, you easily put your energy into wrong stuff and it's going to drain you, you might not notice it either. Uh, the social media, 
will drain you if you, put, if you put energy into it. So you just got to look at it as a business and that's all it is. Yeah. So but, to your point, like sacrifice is so big because people see, you know, Miles Sanders, the NFL running back, but they didn't see you in high school those weekends that you used to miss because you were so focused on your goal. Like, mm-hmm. I'm going to play Division One. I'm going to go to the NFL. I'm going to move my mom, my mom out, you know, mm-hmm. like. People didn't see that. So it's like they see the story, like they give you all the glory, but they don't know the story. You know what I'm saying? And it's not by coincidence. Yeah, yeah. Like, like that shit happen. is. You can't mental, have yeah. pass it. People don't want to put in the work into a lot of When they figure out what you got to do to get to a certain spot, it's, oh, that's too much. Or, you know, what I always hear, I don't like when somebody's telling me what to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I can't go to school. Like, I can't be doing the classes and stuff like Like, bro, this is life. Mm-hmm. Whatever you want to do, even if you do, don't do no school, no no college, no nothing. You end up being an entrepreneur on your own business. That still takes work, mm-hmm. regardless. <laughs> regardless, you can't half ass it. Yeah, like you can't cheat. You can't cheat nothing, man. Yeah. You can't. And it, like, even when you was talking about people being in the wrong place, the wrong time, doing the wrong things, it's always tough seeing. You know, those people that you think of, because I was thinking about people when you were talking about that. And I'm like, damn, if they would have just did the right thing, if they would have had somebody with them, you know, taking them to the right place, they could have been whatever they wanted to be in life. Yeah, and it's like, you just gotta pay attention to people, bro. Yeah. And, and it's important, like, sometimes there's a saying that says, you're not heavy, you're my brother. Mm-hmm. Right. So you can, you can see the people who are in that lifestyle who don't want to be in that lifestyle. Like, it might be because of their parents or, family members or whatever but a lot of the times you know there's people in that situation that don't want to be there so when they have somebody that's like tugging them the opposite direction that's their friend and yep. that's where that saying comes into play like oh yeah my brother so, you're not heavy not that heavy you know? yeah so and, that's why and the, the assets to you know people that's just hanging on like mm-hmm. that's dead weight yeah bro you gotta let that go yep. you can't can't hold on to that if, if you want liabilities yep yeah, for sure. That's deep. Appreciate you, man. Yeah, you sound a little educated, Ed- educated. on here, man. Like, <laughs> I also want to say, I, bro, I've been saying this. The best pass blocker at running back. Oh, thank you. I bro. appreciate you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm up there. I peep it. Come on now. I think I'm up there. Come on. I think I'm up there. I know you okay. are. Come on, yeah, yeah, yeah. man. I appreciate, appreciate you coming, coming on the show, on, man. Love, for man. sure, man. Much love. Appreciate y'all having me. For sure. For sure. All love.